Uh, so we can see that the first table has the means and standard deviations. Let's just say that they were rated on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, so uh, professors were considered a hotness of 6.56 uh, with a standard deviation of 1.39. Now here are the Pearson correlations, and we can see that our dependent variable was correlated with all four of our predictors, and hotness had a fairly substantial correlation of 0.356. And we can see the, the statistical significance levels. By default, when you do a regression, SPSS has one-tailed significance levels. Uh, whether you want to do that or not is up to you. Uh, you can just do Pearson correlations if you want the two-tailed values. So just go through the regular Pearson correlation utility. But in this case, here's one-tailed tests. They're all statistically significant predictors of the dependent variable. And I would recommend, and amongst other people, that you should always look at your correlations before you actually run your hierarchical multiple regression, or just a regular multiple regression. So we can see that higher levels of hotness are associated with higher levels of unit quality. But that's true also for clarity, helpfulness, and easiness. And the question is, well, once you include clarity, helpfulness, and easiness as predictors of unit quality, does hotness add anything extra in the prediction of overall unit quality? And that's what the hierarchical multiple regression is going to tell us. It tells us the variables entered in each block. Not particularly interesting. We should know that, that that's true already without even looking at the results. Now here is a very important table in SPSS in a hierarchical multiple regression. What we have are the R-squared and adjusted R-squared values and the R-values associated with each step in the analysis. So in the first case, when we add clarity, easiness, and helpfulness to the model, we get an R of 0 0.40, an R square of 0 0.16. So 16.3% of the variability in overall unit quality is being accounted for by clarity, easiness, and helpfulness. And then there's an adjusted R squared. I don't have a video on adjusted R squared, but it takes into account the fact that sample size and number of predictors tends to overestimate the amount of predictive capacity in the model. So there's an adjustment made based on sample size and number of variables in the model. It hasn't been a big change because the sample size is not uh, small at 387. That's a pretty decent sample size. It's a very decent sample size, in fact. Uh, so the adjustment is not very big. Uh, from 16.3 to 15.7 percent. Uh, we can see that the R squared change here in the first row of model 1 is equal to 0.163. Now that's a change from 0. So the model starts with no predictive capacity and then when we added the three independent variables we got 16.3 percent and that's why the R squared change is the same thing. So it's basically not really meaningful to interpret R squared change, except in the context of from 0. Uh, then we get an F value of 24.895 with degrees of freedom of 3 and 383. And the significance F change for the first model is 0. 0.000. Now that just means that this R squared value of 0.163, or R squared change, 0.163, change from 0, is statistically significant. Now I'm going to draw your attention to this ANOVA table uh, before I get to Model 2. In this ANOVA table, you get redundant information as far as Model 1 is concerned. Look at this F value, 24.895. It's the same as the F change value from 0. And that's not a coincidence. Uh, so we've got our uh, degrees of freedom for the model, 3 and 83, 383 f value of 24.895, and it's statistically significant. So it's just telling us that model 1, just like it says here in model 1, model 1 is statistically significant. And you get redundant information in this ANOVA table with model 1 in the first row. Now, that's important information that you would report. It's not the most interesting piece of information, though. What we're going to get in model 2 in model summary table is a new R squared value which takes into account the fact that we've included hotness as a predictor variable. So R has gone from 0 0.404 to 0 0.478. In the context of R squared values, it's gone from 0 0.163, 16.3 percent, 
to 22.9%. That's a pretty big jump.